Hello, everybody. So we are live. Can you see us well, hear us well? You can tell us that in the chat section at your right. Hello, hello, Deepen. Hello, Azim. Hello, Pierre. Hello, Patricia. Hello, Philippe. Antoine. Hi from France. <laughs> Hi, Emily. Hi, Giuseppe. Hello, everyone. Hello and welcome. Uh, I'm very happy. Uh, we are very happy to have you tonight. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, in live for our web scrapping workshop. Um, I'm going to introduce myself. I am Lamia, event and community manager at Le Wagon Paris. And around me, uh, there is the amazing team that we run the webinar tonight. Uh, we are not from the same cities, as you might know, because this is a worldwide webinar. Some of us are in Paris or Sao Paulo or London. And uh, you can tell us uh, from uh, which part of the globe you are in the chat section. We want to see uh, many flags, uh, many countries, many, uh, many people. Hello from London, from Andalusia. Wow. From Lisbon, Netherlands, Montreal. Panama, so so nice. Hi from Milan. <laughs> Hello from Qatar, Budapest, Colombia. Great, great. So there are many, many, many cities around the world. I'm amazed. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm going to present before starting this workshop, Le Wagon, for the people who don't know our school. Le Wagon is a school specialist in technical and intensive training. We started seven years ago in Paris, and we are now present in 39 cities around the world. We have trained more than 7,000 people to web development and data science. We have developed two intensive training courses, first one in nine weeks in web development for the people who don't have technical background with different profile as a freelancer, entrepreneur, web designer, and uh, people who want to change their, their, their career. Uh, so it's a great melting pot of background. And recently, we have launched a new intensive name training uh, uh, course in data science, intended for people who want to go even further and become a data analyst, for example. Uh, that's it. So now you know a little bit more about Le Wagon. It's time to know uh, the team who are here. So tonight, as I told you, I am not alone. Hello from Nancy. I'm, I'm from Nancy also. <laughs> um, so tonight, as I'm not alone, as you can see, here is a wonderful team here, here, and here <laughs> uh, that will be with you uh, during this session. And I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Maybe, Koali, you can begin because you are going to be uh, the, the lead teacher tonight and give the lecture. All right. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Coralie. I'm 24. I did at Le Wagon one year and a half ago in Paris. And now I'm a freelance web developer uh, for companies and also for individuals. I, I, I run workshops with them. Happy to be with you tonight. And I love Oh, I'll go next. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Lucy, and I am based in London. So I did the wagon in January in London. But before that, I was actually living in France, and I was working for the New York Times in advertising. But um, in my last role there, I worked with developers on a, on a daily basis. And um, I was so jealous of everything that they could do and all the products they could build. So I decided to, to quit and learn the skills myself. So um, I did, and it was the best decision that I ever, I ever made. And now I am a teaching assistant for the current batch of students and also a freelance developer. So I hope you enjoy today. Well, I can go next. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Julio. I am from Mexico, but I live in London. I did my batch um, a year and a half ago. And now I'm, I'm also like Lucia, a teaching assistant and teacher at uh, Current Batches. I was a product manager for some time. And I had the experience of doing it before the wagon and after the wagon. And there was definitely a difference. Um, and I also quit. I quit uh, last December to create a company. 
and I've been uh, working on this. Ryan, Sarah. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Sarah. So I did the batch in January with Lucy as well. And actually Julio was one of our teachers, which is fun. Um, so good to see you guys again. And Ryan, it's so exciting because Ryan and Julio speak Spanish and Portuguese. And that's what I did my degree in. Um, I used to be a Spanish teacher and then decided, you know what, I want to go into tech, worked at a startup, realized that I wanted to be at the forefront of the tech. So I left the customer services and sort of customer success side. And here I am now. Yeah, I'm freelancing after the batch and also working as a teaching assistant. So it's really good. Nice to see you all. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Haya, but you can call me Ryan. Uh, I studied mechanical engineering, but I never wanted to work in the industry. And they didn't actually teach programming in, in mechanical engineering. We go through all this machine stuff, but we do not learn programming. And I wanted to learn more programming and to, to change my, my career path to that way. So I did live Lagoon about two years ago here in Sao Paulo. That's where I met my business partner. After the batch, we founded a software house. So today we have a team of developers and we build products and help maintain products for startups and companies. And I also am a teacher at Livago. Oh, I think I am mute. <laughs> uh, can, you, can you hear me? No? Yes. Okay, you can hear me. Great. <laughs> um, so now you know uh, everyone, and before that, starting few rules. First, as you know, Corali will give the lecture as a lead teacher for about uh, an hour and a half, and Ryan, Sarah, Julio, and Lucy will answer to your question. To ask your question, please, uh, you can go on the question section at your right knee to the chat. Uh, and during the lecture, listen carefully, no need to take notes uh, as takeaways because you will be onboarded on Learn Zen. Uh, and what is Learn Learn is the e-learning Le Wagons platform, where you will find the keynote of the workshop, the exercises and their correction, so you can go on further in your practice alone at home after this webinar. And last but not least, you will have a lifetime access to Learn. Uh, on, on Learn also, uh, please, uh, you can give us uh, your, your, your feedback, uh, your feedback of, the, of this workshop. It's very... I think we lost a bit Lamia, but, uh, well, we can... Uh, the thing is that we, we have a Lewagon platform that you'll have access to this just after, right after Kohali will end, of, end her workshop. So no worries for, for like um, having to, to make notes or this. And in, in, by the end, uh, we'll, we'll show you quite fast on how, how it looks and all the things that you have, right? Do you have a challenge and a feedback form, all these things, okay? Um, so yeah, I suppose, uh, uh, yeah, one very important thing, if we, like for the questions, if we can just um, use the tab questions on your right, you have chat questions and people. If uh, all the questions that you have go there, then the chat is more just like uh, maybe some comments or something like that, but the questions, all the, the TAs will be there. Okay, so please try to, to use that tab. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think, I think we can start, right? Yeah. And One more thing, it's recorded, it. remember? Yeah. Yeah. So there will be a recording. As soon as we're finished, there'll be a recording at the end of this. So if you miss anything, don't worry. You can watch it back at the end. Oh, sorry. I had I had a little problem. I think I was talking alone. <laughs> I was talking alone. Uh, but uh, I think everyone told, told you what to do now. Um, you, you Did you give the rules for tonight? Yes. Yes. So great. So uh, I'm very sorry for this. Uh, this little problem. Um, 
a little a little reminder so after after the webinar you will receive a link uh, to uh, to watch the the webinar uh, you will have access to learn so no need to to take away you can see uh, you can see uh, the the webinar and the, you can uh, follow the webinar and after we will send you a link to uh, our e-learning platform learn so now you know everything i think so i can let the stage to uh, coralie and uh, we will see us uh, at the end uh, of uh, the webinar thanks everyone see you all right and then in the improvisation this little part uh, okay so i will just uh, Coralie, I think they can't uh, hear hear you. The sound is not very uh, very good. Maybe you can uh, try without your earphone. That sound? Yes, yeah, the sound is not uh, very good. There's I, I can't hear yeah. you. There's some lag. Maybe you can try without the camera. I think when we do a workshop with Anouk, like when she leaves, uh, the sound gets bad. Ah. So maybe you have to stay. Okay, so I need yeah, to stay. That's... Okay, so I'm going to stay. Yeah, that's easy. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Okay. They will tell me in the chat if, they, if it's better, but I think that's it. Okay, great. So. Like you can cut the, the camera if you want. And yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, audio seems better. Right? Yeah. I don't know why Livestorm does that, but uh, I cannot be left alone. I mean, otherwise, the sound is bad. So thank you, Lamia, for. Uh, so I will try to share uh, my slide. Sorry. Do you see my slides? Uh, is that okay? Uh, maybe. The sound is not very good. Okay. Still? Now I think it's okay. Okay, uh, if it's not like you can come back and tell me so that I can pause. Is it okay. good right now? It's not? Now it's now it's good. Yes, it's better. Okay. Okay, perfect. So let's start. Um, so the subject of tonight is uh, web scrapping with Python. So I don't know if you already heard uh, about web scrapping before, but um, in any case, uh, we are going to see tonight uh, what is web scrapping, uh, how can it be useful, and uh, how do we do it? And how do we do it with Python? Because you can do it also with other programming language languages, but tonight uh, it will be Python. So let's start. What is uh, web scrapping? Web scrapping, uh, it's the fact of extracting data from a website um, in an automatic manner. That's to say that you write um, a program, you write some code to extract data uh, on a website. So for example, um, how can it be useful? Let's say you're starting a, a company, um, you built a product that will be useful to, for example, uh, hairdressers. Okay, you built a product for hairdressers. So uh, what you wanna do is um, get all the number, all the phone numbers of all the addresses in Paris, France. Okay, so for that you, you go on Google and you type uh, numbers of addresses, and then you get a lot of websites on which you have uh, all the numbers, all the name of the addresses. And what you would like to do is take all this information and put it on your computer. For example, in a Google Sheet. 
okay? So you want to extract this data to put it in your Google Sheet, and then maybe the Google Sheet, you will send it to your colleagues so that they can call the hairdressers and maybe try to sell uh, your product. So web scraping um, will be useful to extract all the numbers, all the name of the hairdressers and put it in your Google Sheet. That's what it is. So what you get basically when you, you do some scrapping, um, you start with a website. So we see here on the left, uh, the website that we're going to scrap tonight. So it's a website about books. I will detail it later. So this is the starting point. You have the website. Then you do your web scrapping and what you obtain, what you uh, end up with, it's a database basically. So here, uh, as it's a website with books, what you, what you extract are titles of books and also the descriptions of the books. So on the left, this is what you begin with, the website, and on the right, what you end up with. So, um, like I said in the example, um, when you want to extract data from a website, the first, um, the first way that you have in mind, I think, is to copy paste. Okay, you can say that maybe you will be uh, able to copy paste all the numbers into your Google Sheets. Um, you, you can do it, uh, it's simple, but it takes a lot of time. Um, it will take a lot of time and it's not a very interesting uh, thing to do. Um, it's quite uh, a waste of time, we can say that. So that's why uh, we let the robots do the work. And when we say robots, it's just that you write some code that will do it for you automatically. So um, what you scrap, it's not the visual aspect of the website, it's the code of the website. It's in the code that you will find the elements that interest you, the element that you want to extract. And at the end, you will end up with your database, like I said earlier. So basically, um, the web scrapping, it's the step between um, this first step and the second step, okay? So the subject of the workshop tonight will be the in-between uh, in between step. How can we uh, go from this on the left to that on the right? So that's it for the little introduction um, about web scrapping, uh, about the definition. I hope that it's clear, quite clear for you. And if it's not, don't worry, we're going to practice and see uh, a few examples. So uh, hopefully at the end of the workshop, it will be very clear for you and you will be able to practice uh, on websites like Amazon or LinkedIn, or I don't know which websites uh, you intend on scrapping. But before uh, diving in the scrapping, um, I want to make just a little um, uh, explanation about how websites work. So basically, when you want to access a website like levagon.com, uh, our favorite website, you open your favorite browser and you type in uh, the URL of the website you want to access. Excuse me, so excuse here. me, uh, uh, Karani, is it possible to give a, a little zoom to zoom the, your screen a little bit just to, for the people to see uh, better? Uh, I don't think we can zoom and learn on the slide. Okay. If I do control plus. Do you see one of my screen or Two. Just one. One. Yeah, okay. Well, it's, it's going to be uh, okay, I think. Thank you. Yeah, when I zoom, it's, it zooms the numbers. Yes, no, uh, I think it's okay. The slide. It's okay. look okay for people. Uh, later on the workshop, I will be in my browser and I will zoom uh, at the maximum. So you will be able to, to see uh, in a right. bigger way. I think it's just this slide, uh, which is a little bit, uh, quite little. So maybe I'm going to the next one, which is um, more easy to see. Um, what I was saying is that when you want to access uh, a website, you type the URL in your browser and the, um, the concepts that are behind that is that the computer on which you, you type your request is called the client. So that's your computer. And from the client, you send a request. So levagon.com in our example. And this request um, goes to the server. The server is the place 
where is hosted the website that you want to have access to. So here it will be the server where levagon.com is hosted. And when the server receives your request, he sends back to you a response. And this response is an HTML file. And it's in this HTML file that is um, the content of the website that you want to access. So this will be the content of levagon.com. And when the client receives um, this answer from the server, it will interpret it and show the content of the, of the website with the design, the picture, and everything. So basically, what you have to, to get from this slide is just the two concepts, client, server, and the fact that we receive an HTML file. Because we are going to see in two minutes what is HTML and how we can read it and um, basically grab information in it. So when you do the request yourself on your computer, so that's you and your browser uh, on this slide, but when you do web scrapping, it's not you, okay? You write a code, a program that will do it for you. So instead of the little emoji of, of yourself, that's a little robot that will do it. And instead of your browser, um, it's the, I don't know if, the, if you know this logo, it's the Python logo, the programming language that we will use tonight. So it's in Python that we write the request and uh, all the orders that we want, we want to do, what, uh, what we want to get on this page, et cetera, et cetera. That's not you that do the request, it's uh, your, your code, your program. So um, what we are going to need uh, tonight, uh, it's three, three things. So first, the browser. Uh, where we will visit the site and see what we want to extract, okay? So tonight I will use Google Chrome, but if you prefer uh, Mozilla or another browser, you can totally use it, that's no problem. Then the second tool will be Jupyter Notebook. Um, it's a website where, where you can write and run Python code. So what's very handy with this workshop is that um, after, like tonight or tomorrow, uh, if you want to practice what we did, if you want to practice web scrapping on the website, you will not have to install anything on your computer. You just need three tools that are online and you don't have to sign up for them. So that's very handy. So this second tool, Jupyter Notebook, I will show it to you um, uh, later in the workshop and you will, uh, you will see um, how it can be very useful. And the third tool is Beautiful Soup. Beautiful Soup uh, is a Python library for web scrapping. Um, what is a library? It's like a dictionary of uh, actions, uh, of methods. Um, it's like uh, little bits of code that have already been coded by other developers and they give it to you so that you can gain times uh, in your web scrapping program. I will, I will show you that uh, later. So, okay, that's, that's all for the tool, only three for tonight. And which website are we going to scrap tonight? It's uh, this website um, for which you have a screenshot here. It's books.toscrape.com. So why this website? Um, for many reasons. First, uh, it's because we say that this is a website that was built for scrapping. Um, built for scrapping, it means um, many things. First, it means that when you will scrap it, you will not have um, the risk of being sued. Um, you have to know that in some countries, uh, web scrapping is an illegal practice. It's illegal to scrap uh, a website. For example, in France, uh, you cannot do it. So like, because this website was built um, for developers to help them practice their web scrapping um, uh, uh, abilities, uh, you know that when you will scrap this website, you will not be sued, okay? The creator of the website uh, will not sue you. Uh, so that's very handy. And also other things, um, when you want to scrap a website like LinkedIn, for example, if you want to scrap uh, a list of people with their jobs title, etc., uh, you will need to indicate in your code that 
before starting to scrap, you will have to sign in, okay? Because a lot of information on LinkedIn are only accessible after signing in. So the fact that you have to sign in, it's a barrier uh, for scrapping. You have to, to pass over it. So that's a bit of complication. That's totally doable, but a bit complicated. So a website like this one, when where there is no authentication uh, necessary, that's very handy. So that's why we use it tonight. And the last reason is because it's a website uh, without dynamic content. So um, what I mean by dynamic content is like um, some content, for example, generated with JavaScript, which is uh, another programming language. For example, in some websites, uh, you can have a button. And when you click on this button, uh, for example, a pop-up opens. And in this pop-up, you have some text. And it's let's imagine that it's this text that you want to grab, that you want to extract. Um, in this case, you will have to indicate in your program, in your web scrapping program, um, that you have to click first on the button so that the pop-up opens and then you, you get the data that interests you. So this type of dynamic thing like pop-ups or other things like that um, complicates a bit uh, the process of web scrapping. So you, I think you understood this website is very uh, handy, very simple for us. So that's why uh, we chose it. So like I said at the beginning of the workshop, um, what we scrapped is the HTML file of the website. So um, in order to do web scrapping, you have to understand what is HTML, um, how is it written, and um, how can I identify in an HTML file, all the information that I want to extract, okay? If I want to extract, for example, um, the title of the page, I have to understand um, where to look for the title, where I can find the title in the HTML file. So let's see a bit how HTML works, and then we will start uh, to scrap the, the Books to Scrap website. I don't know if uh, some of you may be already encountered uh, an HTML file before. I don't know if it's new for you or not, but don't worry, it will not be, not be that long. So first, for the syntax of HTML, if you want to display something on your website, uh, you cannot write it uh, like this right away. You have to wrap it into what we call tags. So this is a tag um, element, and this is the opening tag. We call it that way, opening tag and then the closing tag. So the only difference between the two is the slash in the, op in the closing tag. So um, these tags can sometimes take attributes. So for example, on the second line, you see that the element tag takes an attribute here, that is called ATTR, okay? And um, after the attributes, we can give it a value. Uh, for that, you put an equal sign and then quotes, and inside the quotes, you have the value of the attribute. Um, that's the syntax that you have to respect when you write HTML. The two first lines are not uh, valid code. Okay, that's just to show you the syntax. Uh, however, the third line is a real line of code. So what does it do? I don't know, maybe you, you already guessed. Um, the A tag is useful um, because it's, it's for uh, inserting links into your website. So when I create an A tag like that, it's to create a link. And the A tag takes um, an attribute that is mandatory, otherwise it will not work. It's the attribute href. So you write href, and then in the value of this attribute, you put the link where you want, um, uh, the address where you want the link to, to lead, okay? So when I write this, what I write, uh, what it means is that I will have on my website Le Wagon written, and when I will click on Le Wagon, it will lead me to lewagon.com. That's how you create a link uh, on a website, on an HTML page. So um, it can be a bit confusing, uh, this syntax at the beginning, but you will get uh, used to it, and there is not there is not a lot of tags uh, to know, maybe around 10. So I will show you um, the main tags that you will encounter the most. 
and then um, when we will scrap uh, later, you will be able to, to recognize them uh, easily. So the first is a tag for the links. What I will, uh, what I want to show you also is that all the websites that you visit uh, on a daily basis are built with the same structure. Um, we call this structure HTML skeleton. Okay, it's the skeleton of the page. So you can be sure that all the websites that you visit have the, the same uh, tags. They they all have the big um, HTML tag that is open at the beginning of the file and uh, closed at the end of the file. And then they both have also um, a tag which is called head and a tag which is called body. And this first line also, also that maybe you noticed, uh, doc type HTML, you have to specify this um, in order to, to tell um, the, the program that what will follow in the document is HTML. It's not another language, it's, it's HTML. So what do we put in the head and what do we put in the body? Um, in the head first, we can say that we put the intelligence of the website. We put all the, um, uh, the, the intelligence of the page. So what is that? I will show you an example right now in the next slide. Um, in the head tag, it's where you put the page title. So what's the page title? What do we put inside this tag title? I will show you right now um, in my browser. Um, up. If I go to Google and I type Le Wagon, this here, it's the page title. Le Wagon, Apprenez à Coder. That's the page title. And we find it also when we open the website. The page title is in the tab here. You see where my, my where my mouse is? That's the page title. And in the head of an HTML file, you also put the meta description. What are the meta descriptions? That's uh, what is featured on Google, okay? For each result, we have a meta description. So this is the meta description um, of Le Wagon website. All these information that are not really a content of the website, uh, go in the head, in the in the head of the HTML file. Okay. And uh, sometimes we add uh, also other lines. And for example, one important line in the head tag is meta char set UTF-8. So this one um, is just to make sure that the accents um, on on some letters will uh, appear correctly on the page. And if I go back to, to the skeleton, what do I put in the body? So that's the, the simpler part. In the body, I put the page content. That is to say, all that will be displayed uh, on the website, all the text, all the images, all the videos, etc. All that go in the body uh, tag. So let's see uh, some examples of um, important tags that you will encounter um, a certainly in websites that you will want to, to scrap. You can see that um, sometimes you will find headers. So headers are the titles of the page. You have the main header, header one, H1. You use them for your main titles. For example, if you have your home page and you want to put a very big title um, at, the, at the top of your home page, that will be a header one, an H1. Then if you want to add to add a subtitle on your page, that will be an H2, etc., etc. Each time uh, a bit less important than the, the previous one. And it goes uh, all the way to H6, uh, but in, in practice, we do not uh, go further than H3. That's pretty, pretty rare. So um, then an important tag that you will see uh, in websites, it's the, the P tag for paragraph. So you add a P tag uh, each time you want to create a paragraph in your website. That's pretty simple. So you open the P tag, you write your paragraph. There is no limitation of characters that can be one letter, two letter, or a uh, hundred words, no problem. And then at the end, you don't forget to close your P tag. Um, you also have what we call uh, a div tag, a division. 
um, you have to understand that when you go on the website, um, each page is composed of a lot of divs. I will show you right now on Le Wagon website. For example, here, you can be sure that you have a div for the navigation bar that is on the top of the page. So this is a div where my mouse uh, is uh, crawling. Okay. Then you have a div on the right. In this div, you have an image. Uh, you also have a div on the, on the left where there is a title of the page, a subtitle, and two buttons. Okay. Basically, a, a div tag is a section on the page. So the div tag is a div that you will see very often on the website uh, that you want to scrap. And you can also um, put tags into tags. So here I have a div tag, uh, and in it, I have two p tags. That's, that's something that we see uh, a lot. You also have the strong tag, um, which is useful to indicate that a word is very important. Okay, so the default behavior is that it will put this word in font weight bold. It will be in bold uh, on your page. So same as P, uh, you can you can uh, put like one word or two words or a hundred, no problem. Uh, the only important things is to wrap uh, the word into the two tags, the opening and the closing one. You can also create lists in your HTML. For example, if you want to display a list of um, things to buy. So for that, you have to open two types of tags. The first one is UL for an ordered list. Um, an ordered means that there is no, there is no relevance, no importance uh, in the order of the things. It's not, um, it's not for example, um, the result of a, of a sports competition, okay? Um, bread, milk, and butter are equally important, so there is no order. That's an honored ordered list. But uh, sometimes it will be useful to create an ordered list. For example, if France uh, won a competition, you will put um, France in first, and then Uruguay, and then Belgium. So when you open an OL tag, ordered list, um, it will put a one before the first item, then two, then three, four, five, etc. Um, so don't forget the two tags. First, the OL, and then the LI, LI for list item. So each list item is wrapped into two uh, LI tags. Okay. And another uh, tag that you will encounter uh, a lot is the image tag. Um, so remember later, I told you that sometimes you can add attributes. Um, some are mandatory and others are uh, not mandatory. So the first one here, the SRC attribute is mandatory because it indicates the, the location of the image that you want to display. So it's SRC for source, okay? So that's the source of the image. So here the image is located in a folder called name is logo.png and then we have attributes um, which is for alternative and this um, these two words will be the alternative text of the image it means that if the image uh, cannot be displayed for for any reason you will have this text that will be displayed um, in the place in in the image place and this text also serves for people who have um, uh, disabilities that cannot see uh, very well. They have uh, softwares that read for them the content of the websites that they are visiting. And so here, uh, when you put that, um, the software will be able to tell the person that, okay, uh, in this place, there is an image and the image represents Le Wagon. So that's not mandatory to put the alt uh, attribute, but it's very useful. So I advise you to do it uh, if you if you sometimes uh, build uh, a web page. Okay. So if you want to sum up uh, a bit what we saw uh, so far, so we saw different uh, tags that you will encounter in the, in a, an HTML file. We saw the div, the p the ordered list, the unordered list, 
the image tag and also the A tag um, to, to create a link. And we also see the strong tag. Okay, so that's the most important ones. Keep them in mind. And don't worry, if you do not take notes, you will have the, the slides uh, after on the Learn platform, uh, like uh, Lamia and Julio said. Okay, so let's continue. I hope that's uh, clear so far. Do not hesitate to ask questions uh, in the questions tab. There are four teacher assistants tonight, so I think all of your questions will be answered. Um, no pressure, guys. So uh, now I will show you how uh, an HTML file is um, presented. So we saw earlier that we have a system of tags, opening tags and closing tags. And we saw also that you can nest tags into tags. Uh, earlier, we had a div in which they, ha they had uh, two Ps, okay, two P tags. So let's see an example of a page. Um, so, the metaphor that you can have in mind is the metaphor of the of the birds like this, because each time you nest um, a tag into another tag, you have to do what we call an indentation. It means that you will um, put a space just before the element that is nested in another in another element. So here, I will show you later in the in the browser. You will be um, able to see uh, better. I think it's a little bit little on the slide, but um, what you have to understand is that there is an article tag in which there is a div tag, in which there is an A tag, in which there is an image tag, okay? It's um, a bit of a, a little boxes. You can see that, um, you can see that like that um, with a lot of boxes, what we, co uh, we call that uh, nested elements. So when talking about an HTML file, we can have also uh, the metaphor of a tree um, because you have at the at the top, okay, at the beginning, the HTML tag that we saw earlier. In the HTML tag, we have two tags. First, the head, and secondly, the body. The head can contain himself um, a lot of tags, for example, title, meta, meta, okay. And body can also, of course, contain a lot of tags um, like H1, P, UL, etc. And each one of these tags can also contain uh, a lot of tags. I think you you understand uh, this uh, this schema. So when talking about that, we can we can see it like a genealogical tree. Uh, HTML would be the grandfather, okay, the ancestor, and then head and body will be uh, the descendants, the the parents. And all the other ones will be uh, children, grandchildren, uh, and they will be siblings, you see. Uh, also, we say siblings because they are on the same line uh, in the tree. And maybe that's not really uh, clear for you right now, all this, uh, these boxes in boxes, but later when we will uh, inspect the website that we want to scrap, um, you will see that it's, uh, it's, uh, it's very important and it's uh, uh, seeable immediately. So keep that uh, in mind. So now let's go uh, on the website that we want to scrap and let's see all the boxes and all the tags that were used. So like I said, the website that we are going to scrap tonight is this one. I will zoom a little bit. Okay. I hope you can see uh, better now. So basically this website uh, is uh, almost like Amazon. Uh, you have a list of books. And for each book, you have the image of the book. Then you have a rating, a title, um, a price. You have also uh, indicated if it's in stock, of, um, in stock or out of stock. And you have a button to add it to your basket and then uh, buy it. OK, so pretty simple website with a lot, a lot of uh, books. And they are also categorized uh, into categories like travel, mystery, etc. That's all for the website. So one of my favorite favorite tools um, as a web developer is what we call the inspector. So if I right click on my uh, mouse, I can click on inspect. And up, 
what I have um, on the left, uh, on the right, sorry, it's the inspector. So I will zoom a little bit up so that you can see better what we have. Up. Okay, perfect. I think that's okay for the size. Um, so if we go up a little bit, you can see that we have the head here, the head of the website, and we have also the body. So that's the two parts that we talked about earlier. If we open the head, we see the title of the page that is in the tab, okay? And other meta description, etc. Not important for the moment, but you see that all the tags that we saw together are here. And in the body, we have uh, some divs, okay? We have also a UL, an ordered list. Uh, what do we have? You can click on the triangle to open a div and see what it contains. So for example, the titles, all products that you see uh, highlighted on the left, because I have my mouse on it, on the inspector. Uh, it's an H1, so header one, and it is inside a div, which is also inside a div. Okay, that's how it works. Um, what can I show you also? Each, each div, so you can open, for example, here you have a form, you can open it also. Div, we have the strong tag that we saw uh, earlier. All is here. Okay, so the first step when you want to scrap a website, it's to go on this website and go in the inspector so that you can spot the elements that you want to grab. So, if we go back to the slides. Oh, there we saw. Okay. What are the attributes that we are going to see most often in the inspector, in the website that we want to scrap? It's two attributes. And these two attributes are the attributes class and ID. Um, how are they useful? The class and ID. Um, are useful to add some styles to uh, some elements in particular. For example, if you have four images on your web page and you want to, to style only one, for example, you want to put this image um, in size 200 pixels, but leave the other images in 300 pixels. Okay, so just want to style only one image. Um, if you style the image by grabbing by grabbing them by the tag. So you will see, you will write an uh, image uh, size uh, 200 pixels that would style all the images because you grab them by the tag. Okay, so all the images have the tag image, so they will all be styled. If you want to style only one element or, or only four, okay, um, only a specific selection, you will have to add a class or an ID to this element it will allow you to uh, specifically target this or these elements. So that's why you see uh, classes and IDs uh, all the time. So often when we, when we want to, to scrap a website, we will grab the elements by their classes or by their IDs. Um, you will not use the, the tag uh, very often because you, you with the tag, you grab uh, too much elements. So a little reality check now. Um, this is the LinkedIn website, okay? And what we can say about the LinkedIn website is that it's a pretty clear website. Uh, the design is pretty uh, well separated. On the left, I have the information about um, my profile. On the, on the right, I have uh, some suggestions of person to follow. And uh, in the middle, I have my, uh, my feed, okay, to see uh, information about my contacts and what they posted, etc. cetera. Um, the idea that I want to, to, to give to you is that um, it's not because a website is very well presented like that, that the code behind it uh, will also be well presented, okay? Uh, you have to know that LinkedIn code is not really well presented it's a website that is quite hard, uh, quite hard to, to scrap. So um, don't get confused uh, 
by, by the design of the website, uh, always go see in the inspector and see what we can do uh, with the code that we have uh, in front of us. So yeah, that's, that's the idea. Real life websites are a mess. Um, we refer to that uh, as a soup of elements. And that's why the library that we will use tonight is called Beautiful Soup. It's because it, um, it helps us uh, see better in, in this soup of elements. Um, so yes, I can say that uh, all programming languages have libraries for parsing uh, HTML because parsing HTML, uh, that is to say, um, um, go on each line of the HTML and see what it contains, um, it's um, a process that is quite uh, difficult to, to code. So for each programming language, you have a library uh, in which you already have some actions, some methods uh, to use to parse HTML. So for example, when I studied at Le Wagon, uh, the programming language that we were using there was Ruby. I don't know if you use uh, Ruby, if you know Ruby, uh, but Ruby has its own library for, for web scrapping. Uh, we use the tool that was called Nokogiri. Um, and so tonight with Python, it will be, um, it will be beautiful soup and Jupyter notebook that we will use. But it's, um, it's not mandatory to use Python to do web scrapping. You can also use uh, another programming language of your choice, for example, Ruby or another, no problem. So tonight, uh, it's Python. So that's the, the documentation. Uh, of beautiful soup and why are we showing you um, this page just to say that it's not because the website is um, not very well designed okay there's not a lot of colors or images in this page um, it, that does not mean that uh, the code behind it uh, is not well presented also okay that's the same idea as the slide uh, with LinkedIn uh, with the LinkedIn website um, what is really important for us is the code and what is behind it. Okay, so now let's start um, the, the demo time, the practice. So I will just go on learn and launch Jupyter Notebook. I will show you at the end of the workshop um, the learn platform. Don't worry, I will do a, a little bit of an intro. Um, while it launches, I will show you um, in the website the information that we want to grab. So I told you that this is a website about books. What we are going to scrap tonight is uh, for each book that is on the website, I would like to grab um, the title of the book and also its price. Okay, for all the books, the title and uh, in front of the title, I would like the price. That will be the exercise of tonight. So we are going to see how um, in like um, maybe 10 or 12 lines of code, so not a lot, okay, uh, I can get back uh, to me all this information that is on the website. Other copy paste all night, I would just have to do 10 lines of code and I will get on the info. So the first step, I will zoom so that you can see better. Oh, okay. So this is Jupyter Notebook. That's the tool I was telling you about uh, earlier. And um, how does it work? You have like uh, squares like this, uh, rectangles, better. And um, you can write your comments, so your your Python code in inside this rectangle. And when you are done typing uh, your code, you just hit the run button at the top, or otherwise uh, on your keyboard, you just have to press Alt and Enter, okay, to launch the command that you just write, just wrote. So first, um, the first command that we, that we will do to start the web scrapping is uh, these two lines. So first, we import a library that is called Request. So first line of our web scrapping tonight is import Request. So what does it allow us to do? Um, it allows us to do request. What is a request is um, what we see earlier in the workshop with the client server slide. A request is um, when you want to access a URL, okay? Uh, for example, http levagon.com. 
So if we want to be able to launch HTTP requests in our code, in our web scraping program, you have first to import request. That's the first line. Then in the second line, we import beautiful soup. OK, that's the library that we use tonight, like I said. And we import it from BS4, that is to say beautiful soup 4. So it's the, the version of the library, OK, the fourth version. When we are done typing these two comments, these two lines, we hit the run button. Perfect. Then what we have to do here in the second step, so the second rectangle, we have to first type the URL of uh, the website that we want to scrap. So I want to scrap books2scrap.com. So I read the, the URL and I stuck this information into a variable and the variable is called URL. So that, that's what I wrote on the first slide. The variable URL contains uh, the URL of the website I want to scrap. Then uh, on the second light, line, uh, sorry, what I wrote is I want to do a request to this URL. I want to launch this URL, basically. Uh, this line, it's like when you go in your, into your browser and you type a URL into your, your tab to access it. But here is the robot that does it. And this is how he, he does it. Request.get and uh, between parentheses, the URL. And same, uh, we stuck the result inside a variable that we called response. Why use variable? Because we maybe want to reuse that later, for example, on the next line. So that's better if it's uh, inside a variable. So that we just have to put the name of the variable and not rewrite again all this line. So what we are doing on the third line is that we want to get uh, the content of the response. Do you remember that I told you that what the server sends back to me is uh, an answer, which is an HTML file? So what I want is the content of this answer, response.content. And I want to stock that into a variable that I call HTML. When you choose the names of your variables, that's good to choose a name that's co that corresponds uh, to what's in it, OK? Um, here, uh, what I have is HTML. So it makes sense to have a variable called HTML. But you can call it um, uh, as you like, uh, no problem. But uh, HTML, I think it's a, it's a good name, pretty simple. And finally, the fourth line. Um, we use the library beautiful soup and we pass it uh, HTML, that is to say the content of the website that we want to scrap. And we tell uh, beautiful soup to parse this HTML. So to see each line and prepare it to be scrapped, if you like. And what um, we obtain from this command, we stuck it inside a variable called scrapped. So the, and then we click on run, of course. OK, so when you will scrap uh, a website with Python and Jupyter Notebook, these six lines will always be the six first lines of your program. OK, you always do the, the two imports, then you indicate your URL and you extract um, the content, basically. OK, so now we can begin uh, the scrapping. I hope that uh, so far everything is clear. Um, uh, no more theory. Now it's only uh, practice. So let's see what is in the variable scrapped. What did we uh, manage to extract from the website with these uh, six lines of code? So I just typed scrapped, which is the name of the variable. And then on my computer, like I said, I, I enter, um, I press Alt and Enter. And then just under my, uh, my command, my command in Python, I get the result. So the result is the content of the website. That is to say, all the HTML that I saw um, in, my, in my browser when I inspect. Uh, five minutes ago, I did inspect, and we had, uh, you remember, all the code um, on the right part here. So that's the same. So you see that with only six lines of code, we managed to have all the content of a website. You see it's very long. You have the cursor here. It's very long. Perfect. 
So um, now what we are going to do is uh, try to extract some information inside um, what we get because it's very um, it's very uncommon to want to scrap the website just to to get all the website. In general, you want specific information. So we will try to get specific information. For example, um, if I go back to uh, the content of what was uh, sent back to me here, I see all the websites, perfect. And normally I should have the page title at the beginning. Let's see where, okay. Here I have the page title of the website, okay? All products, books to scrap, sandbox. I would like to, um, to get this data, only this data. So what I type here is scraped. So that's uh, all the content, all that is uh, displayed here. But in scraped, I would like only the title of the page. So what I can do is dot title. I press Alt and Enter, and I get the page title, OK? So um, this title is not really interesting because I have the tag with it. I have the opening tag and the closing tag, and I don't want that. I just want this sentence. So what do I do to just have this sentence? I write scrapped.title.text because what I want is the text uh, inside the title tag. Enter, and then I get the text. The problem is um, I do not have only the text. I also have some special characters, uh, which are uh, this backward slash and the end. What is uh, this thing that I also have at the end? I'll show you. It's uh, the new line. You see that you have here the opening tag title, and then you have a new line, and then you have the title, and then you have another new line, and we have this title. So I'm not interested in all this space and all these new lines, so I want to, to get rid of them. So how do I do that? I type same thing, and at the end, I call a method, so um, a bit of code that was, or, that was already coded before, okay? Uh, which is the stripped method. When you call a method, you add, you add parentheses at the end. And uh, this stripped method will, will help us get rid of these characters. Okay, perfect. So when I do that, I manage to get only the title of the page. So basically, that's how web scrapping works. You just have to identify in the, in the HTML of the website that you want to scrap, uh, what is the tag or what is the class or the ID of the elements that you want um, to extract? So here I took the example of the title, but tonight we will uh, we will want to extract the, the title of the books and also the prices. So it will be a bit different, but the idea uh, it's that. Okay. I hope that it's, uh, it's clear for you um, for now. So now let's go back. Um, inside oops inside the website and let's see um, how we can manage to um, grab the title of the book so I put my mouse on um, the title I right click and click on inspect so that I have the element on the right immediately so here I see that the title of the book is inside an a tag it's a link that's logical because when I click on the title of the book, I arrive on the on the specific page for this book. Okay, so that's logical uh, to be a link. So I have an A tag in which I have the title of the book. This H, this uh, sorry, A tag. Um, we we see here that there is a little space, an indentation, which means that it's inside another tag. This other tag is an H three. We see that if we close the H3, we do not see the A tag anymore. So the A tag is inside the H3. And if we go up the tree, the tree, sorry, uh, we see that the H3 is inside a tag that is called article. Okay. If I close article, I do not see the H3 and the A. Okay. It's a, it's a system of boxes. 
So if I want to access the title of the book, basically what I have to say, what I have to, to do is enter the article, then enter the H3, and then enter the A. Okay? So let's do that. First, how do I access the article? To do that, I type script. Um, all our comments tonight will uh, begin with script because it's the box in which we are searching. Okay, so script dot find, and when, what we want to find is uh, a tag that is called article. Okay, so script dot find article. Let's see what we get. Okay, we get um, if we go back on the website. We get all of that, all the article tag and um, its content. So we see that we have uh, a div, an A, etc., etc. Uh, right now, it's too large. Okay, we do not want all of this information. We just want the title of the book. So we are going to enhance a little bit uh, our command. Uh, first, here um, we see that this article has a specific ID. Uh, it has a class, which is product pod. Um, so it means that when in our Jupyter notebook, we write scrap.findArticle, it will get back um, an article, but not uh, certainly the one that we are interested in. If we want to make sure to have this article specifically, we have to precise that we want the article that has the class product pod. This way, we are sure to get this one, OK? We are going to scrap only the first book, and then we will scrap the entire uh, page. Do not worry. Just, just to show you uh, how it works. We start with the first book. So I want to say that I want to uh, grab the article that has the class product pod. So I just write article class underscore equals product pod, OK? And then I hit enter. So that's the same result, no problem. And we said that uh, once we are inside our article, we want to go inside the H3. And then when we are inside the H3, uh, we want the A, OK? Because we want the title of the book. So let's do that. How do we enter in each box when we do our command? We just uh, use dots. So here we are in the article. If we want to enter the H3, I write dot H3. Then I hit enter. And here I only got the H3. So that's OK. That's good. Then I want the A tag that is inside. So I just write dot A. And I hit enter. And I have the A. Perfect. We said that the text um, is inside the A tag. So to get rid of the tag, um, like earlier with the title, we just have to do dot text. So I do that. And what I see here is that the title is not complete, is not full. OK, let's go back to the website. We see that the content of the A tag is indeed uh, a title that is not complete. But in the A tag, we see that the complete title exists. It's not inside the A. It's uh, here, okay? I hope that you see uh, you see well. Is it big enough? Um, we see that the title um, complete is inside an attribute that is called title. It's uh, the attribute title that is put on the A tag, and the value of this attribute is the entire uh, title of the of the book. So we are going to grab this instead of the, the content of the A tag. So to do that, we are going to go back a little bit, just up um, grabbing the A tag. And what we are interested in, it's this part. L equals, sorry, a light in the attic. So how do I get, how do I grab the value of the title attribute? For that, I cannot do dot title because there is no title tag. It's a title attribute, so the syntax is a bit different. You have to do 
um, I don't know how to call it in English, but this sign and um, inside the name of the attribute, so title. So basically what I wrote here is I want to enter Scrapped, which is the content of the website. Inside Scrapped, I want to find um, a tag that is article, the article tag. Which type of article tag? The one that has the class product pod. Inside this article, I want to enter the H3. And inside the H3, I want to enter the A, the A tag, the link. And I want the value of the title attribute. OK, so let's run this comment. And we get the title um, of the book. Easy. Perfect. So that's how you get a title of the first book. I know that we said that we have to, to scrap all the titles. Don't worry, we are going to do that. It's just to show you how it works. So um, now what we can do is, um, as we want all the titles, we want logically all the articles. Okay, Here we only have one article. Let's try to grab all the articles on the page. Remember, if we go on the website, what is an article? It's what is highlighted on your left. So it's the, the box of the book, basically. OK, the image, the title, the rating, etc. All of these are in an article tag. Perfect. So how do I get all the articles? I do that dot find all, because we do not want only one result. We want all the results. So find all, all, article, still the same uh, with the class product pod. And we hit enter. And then we get all the article of the page. So all the books. OK? Perfect. This, if we feel that we are going to use it later, we can stock it inside a variable. So I will stock it inside a variable called articles. Articles equal scrap dot find all etc etc. Perfect. So um, now let's see what is the type of this data uh, article. Is that um, is that a, a chain of letters? Uh, what is it? To see what type of data it is, we have to type uh, type. So type parenthesis articles will give you the type of data um, that is article. So I hit Alt and Enter. And I get a beautiful soup element result set. So maybe it can be a bit confusing, this name, but it's actually something that is really useful because you can iterate on it. So iterate means um, passing through each element of a big box, basically. Here we have a big box of articles, OK? And we can pass through each element to do something to them. So for example, if I want to iterate on each of my articles, I can say for article in articles. So for each of, um, for each article in my big box articles, I want to do, etc., etc. So here, what do I want to do? I want to display each article. To display something on the screen, to see it, we type print. And what do I want to print? I want to print article. So for each article that is inside articles, I want to print article. Sorry, it's a bit repetitive, but that's the way, that's the way to do it. So we hit Alt Enter, and here I have all my articles that are printed for me. OK, we have iterated on article. Um, you will see uh, later in the workshop that it's very, very useful uh, to do that. So let's do something more practical, more practical in um, some kind of iteration that is very useful for article in articles. This time, I do not want to print the whole article. I just want to print the title of the book. Later, um, earlier, sorry, we, we managed to get the title of the book. So let's do that now. For each article in articles, I want to print article.h3. 
dot a later. Okay? For each article in articles, I want to print the title of the book. Let's do that. And here I get all the titles of the books that are on the page. Okay? You see that I didn't write uh, too much code, maybe like uh, maybe like 11 or 12 lines, and I am already able to um, grab all the titles of the books. So perfect. The first part of the exercise is done. I have all the titles. Now let's get the prices, if you will. So let's go back on the website. I see that uh, the title is here. Uh, what do I have to do? I have to inspect it so that I can see, uh, does it have a class? Does it have an ID? Um, wh what is it exactly? Here I see, um, maybe I will zoom a little bit. Up. Here I see that my price, uh, 51.77, is uh, wrapped inside a P, so a paragraph that has the class price color. So basically, if I um, try to grab all the P elements that have the price color class, I should be able to get all the prices. Let's try that. So we are going to go down a little bit. We are finished with the, with the book titles. We now want the prices. So prices egal equals, sorry, <laughs> I'm French. Uh, prices equals scrapped dot find all. I want to find all the paragraphs, so all the p, which have which have the class underscore equals the class price color. Okay. And if I want to uh, show what I what I manage to stock inside my variables. I have to type the name of my variables and hit enter. Perfect. So here I have all my prices. I'm very happy. But you know me, I do not like the tags like this. I want to get rid of the of the tags. So what I do, I will do it um, under here. I will iterate on each of these prices. And for each price, I will um, get back uh, only the text. Okay, only the, the number. So for price in prices, for each price in my big box prices, I want to print price.text to get only uh, the content inside the two tags. And I get the text. Perfect. So now um, if I want to see what type of data uh, it is. I have to type type. So type price text to see what is it uh, exactly. And here we see str. So str it's for string and string uh, it's a chain of uh, of letters. Okay, a chain of characters. So um, that can be uh, enough for you if you just want to to scrap all the prices and then uh, do not do um, any calculation with it, you can be satisfied uh, with only strings. But if you want later to calculate, for example, to, um, to show only the lower prices or only the higher prices, etc., if you want to do some math there, um, after that, you have to transform each price uh, into a number, okay, the, the type of data that you want to have, it's number, okay? So um, let's do that. Let's transform this price into number so that we can calculate some things uh, later. So what I want to do, it's for price in prices. Um, I want, so I have price.text, I want to transform this into a number and uh, we see that it's number with um, a dot okay it's decimal numbers and in python the type of data which corresponds to numbers with a decimal part is called float written like this float 
So if you want to transform a string into a float, you just have to write float and then open parenthesis and uh, write the element that you want to transform. So here we, we have uh, transformed um, each price into a float, into a number. So if I do that for price in prices, float price text. Oh, yes, I cannot, I cannot show it uh, to you. Up. I just have to do price equals float price text. And then for each one, uh, we want to print the price. That's a, that's a better thing to do. Um, what did I do? Take, take, take. I think I, I have to redo this command. Yes. So for price in prices, print price text. Okay. And then what I want to do is transform it in float. So maybe I will do print float price text. Sorry. I'm missing a parenthesis. Oh, okay. And what does it say? Could not convert string to float. Oh, yes. Sorry. I missed a step. Um, of course, you cannot transform this one into a float because you have this little sign here, um, which Python doesn't, doesn't know how to transform it. So we have first uh, to get rid of this little sign, and then we will be able to transform it into a number. Sorry, I missed a little step. OK, so for price in prices, um, I want to say that price equals price dot text. And then how do, do we get rid of the little sign for the money? We have to do uh, not a strip like earlier, but a left strip. So L strip, because the element that we want to strip is, is located on the left. OK, L strip, and we precise um, between parentheses, which element we want to get rid of. Okay, so I want to L strip the, the money sign. Perfect. And I want to print each price. Let's do that. So now we have all the prices uh, without the sign. And now if I want to, to transform it um, into a number, I wrap it into float. Perfect. Okay, and then if I do price or type price, I see that I now have a float. So each price, um, I have them all, okay, and they are all float, so I can um, do calculation with them. Perfect. So um, we managed to get all the titles of the books and all the prices. But um, this data doesn't have doesn't make uh, doesn't make much sense uh, right now in this way because the the title is not associated uh, with its price. Okay, so we just have to do the connection between the two. So let's do that. We, when we want to assemble some data uh, together, we have to use some other types of data. Um, right now, we know the string for for letters, etc. And we know the float for the number. But let me introduce to you uh, two other types of data. First, we have the lists. So um, if some of you um, learned Ruby, um, the lists in Python are like the arrays in Ruby. OK, that's the same thing. So let me show you how I can create a list. For example, I will create a list of ages. OK, so there is some, someone that has uh, 12 years old. Another one that has 25 years old, uh, 87, and uh, 69. Okay? This is a list. Perfect. And um, this list is very handy because I, ha I can iterate over, over it. Okay? So I can do like earlier. For age in ages, I want to print age. Okay? So it prints all the ages. No problem. So this is a list. This is a type of data that can be very useful. And um, the, the second type of data that I want to show you is called a dictionary. 
and uh, the dictionaries in Python are like the hash in Ruby, for those of you that studied, who studied uh, Ruby. So let's create a dictionary. For example, I recreate a dictionary that is uh, a student. A dictionary is a type of data where you associate um, um, a thing with another thing. I can show you right now. A student, we will put um, a key, which is called name, and the value of this key, the value of name, is Bob. So basically, we created a student who has a name, and this name is Bob. And then you can add, you can add other um, groups of key values, other key value associations. We can, for example, create age, and age will take uh, for value uh, 52. OK? So this is a dictionary. And what is very handy with the dictionary is that you can um, extract data from the dictionary by um, using the key. So if I want to access the value Bob, I can call it with the key name. I can show you right now. If I want to grab Bob, I just have to put the name of the dictionary, so student. And here I put the key, so name. So student name is Bob. And I think you guessed it. If I do student age, oh, sorry, index, student age, I will get 52, OK? So it's two types um, of data that can be uh, very useful and that have uh, their particular uh, way of uh, functioning. So um, right now, we said that we have on, on the one side uh, all the titles of the book and on the other side all the prices. What we want to do is assemble them. So what looks to me uh, the better way, the better um, type of data to use to do that, it's that we are going to create a list of dictionary. Okay, so we'll have a list like this. And inside, we will have dictionaries, and each dictionary will be a book. Okay, and inside each dictionary, we will have two information, the title and the price. So um, I can show you what the result will look like. I have a list, and inside, I have a dictionary. The key will be um, the title of the book, okay? For example, uh, life, uh, I don't remember the title of the first book, uh, light, I think, like in the attic. And um, in front of that, we will have the price of the book. So for example, 21. Then we will have another dictionary for another book, okay? Um, another book. And the price will be like uh, $34, okay? That is the result that we want to have. We want a list of dictionaries and maybe you maybe you are thinking or oh, what how can it be useful um, why can i um, extract this and put it in a google sheet or something like that because sometimes when you do your web scrapping uh, once your web, web scrapping is, is done uh, you are not done you have um, after to do some calculation or some classification and this you will do with code so it's better to extract your web scrapping data uh, in a format that will be um, uh, practical to, to deal with with code. So this is very practical. You will be able to iterate over it and extract information inside it. So we will try to extract all this information um, um, inside a list, and it will be a list of dictionaries. So let's do that. Let's keep the example. Um, in front of our eyes right there and let's start i said that i want to extract all of my data inside a list so first i have to create a list uh, an empty list so let's call it results results equal uh, equals uh, empty list and then um, i want to uh, extract all the articles we did that earlier remember articles equals scrapped dot find all I want to find all the article tag, and not all of them, but only the ones that have the class product pod. Perfect. And for each of these articles, 
for article in articles. I want to get the title. So title equal, equal sorry, 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 sorry. Title equals articles dot h3 dot a title. Okay. So that's the title. We, we did that earlier. Then we want the price. So the price, um, the price equals article but um, how can I do that? I will do article dot find. Sorry, yes, P. So remember that the price is inside a P tag, which has the class, the class price color. Perfect. And then we said that we want the price. Um, we want only the text inside the tag. We do not want the symbol of the, the money. Okay, oh, sorry, up. And we want to transform it into a number, into a float. So float, all of that we did earlier. Okay, I'm just reading what I wrote. Take, take, take. Okay, perfect. And then we want to take this information, so title and price, and we want to put it inside our empty list, which is called results. So how do we do that? We do results.append. Append is a method that allows us to, um, to add elements inside the list. So results.append. And what do we append? We append each book. And each book, we said that it should have uh, the type of data dictionary. So what we append is a dictionary. So I open curly braces. And for uh, the key, I want the title. And I want the value to be the price. OK? Are you following me? Um, and then last step, I want to print what I got. I want to print the results. So I just write print results. So you see that's just like eight lines uh, of code. And when I hit Alt Enter, I get all um, the information of the website, uh, a list with dictionaries inside. And I get my favorite book, A Light in the Attic with his price, etc., etc. That's how uh, we managed to scrap uh, this website. And uh, of course, that's just um, a simple way uh, to scrap. We, what we managed to get, it's all the books that are on this page. But you see that on this website, there are 50 pages of books. And you can totally scrap all of them, no problem. You just have to indicate in your code program that you want to go to the next page uh, each time. I can show you that. Uh, if you click on next, you see that the URL of the website changes and you have the, the page number inside the URL. So in your program, you, you will just um, iterate on the number and say, I, I want to grab all the information on page one. Then I do page plus one to go to page two, etc., cetera, et cetera, uh, to the moment where I no longer have any next page. Okay, that's totally doable. Uh, we rarely... Uh, scrap only one page. Um, most often, you have to scrap the entire website. So don't worry. That's that's very possible. It's just that it's an introduction uh, workshop, so I don't um, I don't show you the, the 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 next step. I just show you how how to scrap uh, in the more simple manner. Okay, perfect. I will just uh, now go back to the slides and show you the last um, concept of the workshop, and then we will. Uh, we will be done for tonight. So let's go back to the slides. So the demo we did, you have the command, you have some command uh, that we do, well, that we did together. Okay, we located the stuff um, in the inspector, we found uh, what was uh, interesting for us. Okay, perfect. Yes, we did that. Also, we did that also. Perfect. Yes, find all, we did that. The ID, the class, yes, I explained. And now the next step that I want to show you, uh, that's okay for the CSS selector, 
Um, yes, just to show you examples of different class selectors, you will have it uh, if you want to, to reread it after. Uh, one element can have uh, one class, can also have two class. Uh, that's no problem. You just have to target um, the, the way you prefer. The, the, the more precise way uh, is the better. But what is important for us right now is a, a new keyword that I want to show you. It's the keyword select. So I will show you uh, in Jupyter Notebook so that you can see better. Okay, that's, that's better here. So select, um, you see that um, so far, what we did was scrap.find or scrap.find all. Okay. But you have to know that it also exists another keyword, which is select. And what you can pass to select is either the name of the tag, so div, p, a, emg, as you like, img, sorry. Um, or you can pass the class of the element. So for example, product pod. And when you pass the class, you have to make a, a little dot uh, at the beginning of the, of the class name. Okay, that's how we represent a class with a dot. And if you're targeting an ID, which is another way of um, uh, make an element in the HTML special to target it specifically, you can add an ID to it. And if you target an ID, you just have to put um, this hashtag, I don't know how to call it, the, hash, the hashtag uh, behind it, okay? So the three way, either the tag or the class or the ID, the three works. So if we want to select all the elements that have um, the class price color, we just write scrap.select.priceColor. We hit enter and we have them, okay? The select works uh, perfectly well. And what is interesting with the select is that you can chain uh, comments. So for example, um, if you want to select, I will write it and then explain, that's better. Um, I want to select article H3A. What these do, um, it, it, it goes, it goes to search all the A tag that are located inside H3 tag that are themselves located inside article, okay? Like, um, like uh, you have the, the grandparent article with the parent H3 with the grandchildren A. Okay, you can uh, chain like that, uh, no problem. What you can also do is uh, combine several select commands inside one. So for example, if you do scrap dot select article um, comma H3 comma A, this way, you select all the article and all the H3 and all the A, okay? No relation between them. No relation of boxes inside boxes. It's just all the article, all the H3 and all the A. That's a way uh, of doing things. Don't worry, the comments are in the slides, so you, you will be able to go back to that uh, later. Uh, you can do also um, a chaining of classes. If you want to target an element that has uh, several classes, you can do that. Scrap dot select, and then you write the, the several classes. For example, if you want to, I will go back to the website to show you. If I want to target the word in stock, I just inspect it. Up, and I see. Up, I just go down a bit. Yeah. I see that uh, the in stock word are, is located inside a P, which has two classes, which has first the class in stock and secondly, the class availability. So I will not target the class uh, in stock only or availability only, I will target the, the two classes, okay? So to do that, I will select dot in stock dot availability, availability, yes. And then you have all the P's on the website that have the two classes. You see? Okay, let's do a last one. So, oh, sorry. The last one, uh, more complex. Scrap.select product pod. 
Ok. Euh, coma. Euh, non. Product pod. P. Dot. In stock. Dot. I will explain. Don't worry. Dot. Availability. Coma. Price color. Yes. Ok. What I do here is that um, I have two, two comments, two searches. I have the first one here on the left of the comma and the second one here on the right of the comma. So I want first to um, up. I want first to go inside the elements that have the class product pod. Inside that, I go inside the P, which have the two classes in stock availability, the two classes. And my second uh, request is to get back, um, is to grab all the elements that have the price color class. Okay, that's two separated um, requests. Okay, let's see if uh, if it brings something. Yes, we have a response. We can totally chain a different request inside a select. Uh, that's no problem. Okay, so maybe you are asking. Um, which keyword you should use, either find or final or select. Um, the answer is the one you prefer. I don't know which one you are more comfortable with. Uh, maybe you will find out when you do some tests. Uh, I like personally the select, so I, I use it a lot. OK, so that's the end of the workshop. I will show you now um, what the Learn platform looks like. And then uh, Lamia will come back to, um, to show you um, to show you in details and how you can onboard on the platform. So basically, when you will be onboarded on the platform, you will have on the left uh, a section which is called instruction, where you will find uh, a link, launch binder, which leads to the Jupyter notebook that we use tonight. So you will be able to practice. Then you have also a video of this workshop that is given by another uh, Levagon teacher. So you will have this video plus the replay of uh, the workshop. So you will have two videos, a uh, lot of choice. Then you will have also the slides of the workshop. You will have uh, a section that is called your turn. And then this is um, a little challenge that we put for you with some exercise uh, to complete and some um, screen sh screenshots to help you. You have also a section which is called takeaways. And here you will have a little quiz. If you want to test your knowledge, see um, what you remember from the workshop, if uh, it's all very clear uh, in your mind. So do not hesitate to take the quiz. Then you have three little sections with um, uh, some takeaways about the key notions. So Python 101, what is Python? What is the syntax? Uh, you will see some things that we practiced uh, together. Beautiful Soup 101, uh, again, key concepts. And um, an example of a more complex uh, scrapper, if you want to, to practice. You have everything here. And uh, the last section, which is uh, Lamia's favorite section, it's the feedback section, uh, where you can put, um, you can write what you thought about the workshop, um, what was good, what was uh, not good, and what we can improve uh, for the next one. Do not hesitate to, to leave uh, some comments for us. And uh, that's that's it for me. I thank you very much for following this workshop, for staying with me uh, and the team uh, tonight. I hope that you enjoyed it and then that you learned uh, some things. I wish you a very good evening and uh, see you maybe next time for another workshop. So guys, this is the, the end of the workshop. Thanks everyone for your time tonight. Thank you. Uh, it was a very, it was a pleasure to have you. Thanks to this amazing team that you had tonight. Coralie, Sarah, Julio, Ryan, and Lucy. Thank you very much for your time also tonight. Um, now you will have all the material on Learn or e-learning platform. You will find, as a, as a colleague uh, showed you, uh, the keynote of the workshop, the exercises, and the correction. So you can go further in your practice. Um, and as I said at the beginning, at the beginning of the webinar, we'll, you will have a lifetime access to learn, to to go back and to practice uh, this uh, this web scrapping. Uh, also, as a, as a Coralie said, I really like the the section feedback and learn. So don't hesitate to give us your feedback to improve. Um, and finally, in a few minutes at the end of the, the webinar, you will receive a replay link to rewatch this workshop. 
Uh, and uh, we have many, many different webinars with many topics. So don't hesitate to join us for our next ones. Uh, and uh, and uh, and that's it for for tonight. I'm gonna resend the link of the the the, the learn platform for the people who hadn't who has not seen it. Oh. And now you can start coding on Learn at Home. Thanks, everyone. Have a great evening. Thank you to the team. Thank you, team. Amazing team as usual. <laughs> Bye. Bye.